What's up, my name is Techno, but here for Troubleshoot and welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to be tackling abnormally high CPU usage from a service or process called svchost.exe. You can see this if you open up your task manager using control shift escape or right clicking on your start bar and clicking task manager. If you sort by CPU usage and for some reason at the very top you see svchost.exe or simply something that says service host followed by a bunch of text, then this video is going to help you tackle that issue. If your PC is really slow because of this, what can we do to solve this? Well, unlike my video on Superfetch, this isn't really often caused by a glitch in your PC. More often than not, it's caused by a virus, malware, or a rootkit. So before we even get into possible solutions for this issue, the first thing that you should do is make sure that you have an antivirus installed on your computer and it's working properly. If you don't have one, it's a very good idea to get one. If you have a free or paid antivirus, you're probably going to be safe enough as is. If you haven't got an antivirus, it's a very good idea to get one, even if it's free. And if you have a paid antivirus that you didn't necessarily pay for, you know what I mean, then it's a very good idea to uninstall it and get yourself an official, proper, free antivirus, as having one that isn't the most legitimate isn't always the safest, and it's usually a pretty bad idea. If you don't have an antivirus, what exactly can you do? Well, simply searching the internet for free antivirus, we have Avast. Scrolling down, we have AVG. I haven't heard of the rest of these. Bitdefender I've heard of, Kaspersky, McAfee. And one of the ones that doesn't seem to be on this list is also Malwarebytes, which I've had personally okay experiences with, as well as some of the other software here. I personally use a paid official version of ESET Internet Security. However, of course, you don't need a paid antivirus to help protect your PC. A free version is usually more than enough. If you have an antivirus installed or you just installed one, head across to the scan section and click scan your computer with everything selected. If you have an advanced scan option, click on it and select custom scan if you can. Inside of here, make sure to check absolutely everything, including all of your hard drives. And if you have options like this, the operating memory, boot sectors, databases, registry, etc., etc. Operating memory is usually where rootkits stay. That's your Windows folder on your C drive and your RAM. If your antivirus completes its full scan and finds absolutely nothing, then don't worry, there's something super simple that we can do. Still assuming it's some kind of rootkit or malware, something we can do is download and use a program called Rkill as well as ADW Cleaner. These two pieces of software are usually really good at getting rid of rootkits that could be on your PC if an antivirus didn't exactly do it for you. These will both be linked in the description down below. All you have to do is click download now at bleeping computer and you should have both of these EXEs downloaded onto your PC in just a moment. All you have to do is open them up. Now, because these will restart your PC at a stage, I've simply fired up a virtual machine that I'll be running the software on. I'll simply copy it across to my desktop, but for you, they'll be in your downloads folder. Let's start with rkill. Simply opening it up and running it as admin will show us this over here. All it does is it simply searches through the running memory on your computer and checks for anything that could be a bit sketchy. After it's done, you should see this over here. If for some reason a rootkit or malware was preventing an antivirus from running properly, this should have helped it. Let's click OK and we'll have a little report over here that we can simply close out of. Next up, let's open ADW Cleaner. After clicking yes once again, this window will pop up over here. Adware Cleaner is part of Malwarebytes now. Simply click I agree, and then all you have to do is click Scan Now. You don't have to do anything extra. Once the scan is complete, after a restart of your computer, things should be working as expected. Otherwise, you can run the scan through again, and then simply click Run Basic Repair. Click Continue, and it'll try some basic fixes. After this, you should restart your PC once again. At this point, your PC should be clean of viruses or rootkits. So go ahead and open up your task manager and see if your SVC host is taking up 100% of your CPU anymore. If not, great. If it is, then there's a couple more things that we can try. It could just simply be an issue on your PC introduced by a driver of some sort. What exactly is svchost.exe? Well, it's a generic host process name for services that run DLLs or dynamic link libraries. Basically, these are shared files that different programs can access and use on your computer. This makes reusability more possible and allows for smaller sizes of programs. Because you can't simply run one, they run in these SVC host containers that other programs can reach into and use parts from. This is as far as I understand how to explain this simply. 
So, in other words, we can't exactly end these tasks and expect everything to work normally. So, if we're entirely sure that it's not caused by a virus, we can try a couple more things. So, to find out what exactly is causing a ton of slowdown on your computer, you can head across to the next link in the description down below, where we'll be downloading Microsoft software called Process Explorer. Simply click the download text over here and open up the zip that downloads. Simply make a new folder on your desktop, drag and drop everything out into said folder, open up the folder, and you can close the zip. Simply open up PROC EXP64, hit agree, and then the program should open up. If for some reason it doesn't open up and you're using a 32-bit PC, try running PROC EXP without 64 after it. Awesome. Now that we're inside of here, this is basically your task manager once again, though it's a bit more confusing. We have a CPU tab, private bytes and working set, which are both RAM, which we can see inside of the task manager over here as memory. So CPU, CPU and memory, memory. Because a process is using 100% of your CPU and it simply just says SVC host, what exactly is that controlling? Well, that's exactly why we downloaded the software. Simply click CPU at the very top to sort in descending order of CPU. System idle process is unused CPU on your computer and is purely just to tell you how much isn't being used currently. The next process down should be the process that's taking up the most CPU on your computer. If system idle process is invisible, don't worry about it. Just find the svchost.exe that's taking the most amount of CPU on your computer. Let's say it's this one over here. Simply hovering over it gives you a pop-up box with information on exactly what it is. This one, for example, hovering over it says command line, blah, 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 path, blah, 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 services, windows, audio, brackets, audio, SRV. So if this one was taking 100% of my CPU, it means that there's something wrong with the audio driver on my computer. It could be a video driver, it could be an audio driver, it could not be a driver at all. If it has something to do with audio or video, make sure that you go across to your vendor's website or Windows Update and make sure that you download the most up-to-date, correct version of the drivers for your computer. It could be Realtek audio drivers, it could be NVIDIA or AMD graphics drivers. Just try and update those if those are causing the issues. After a simple restart of your computer, things should be working properly. That being said, often the simplest solution is downloading the most up-to-date Windows version. Simply hitting start, typing an update, and opening up check for updates allows you to update your computer. Simply clicking check, we'll go ahead and search, and after it's done searching, we should be able to download and install the latest Windows updates. As you can see, there's two of them pending right now that'll be downloaded and installed. I can leave this going in the background. After that, everything should be solved on your computer. If you hover over it and you recognize what program it could be, and it's something you don't necessarily need to use on the daily, you could go ahead and try to uninstall it. Some of them will have a drop down like this with a whole bunch of other programs running inside of it. Sometimes you'll be able to tell exactly what process and what program is causing the issue on your computer. If so, then you can go ahead and try to close said program and see if your issue is solved. Sometimes a simple reinstall of the software can be more than enough to solve your issue. Otherwise, the last solution is temporarily disabling the service causing said issue. So if I hover over one of these things here, I'll be able to search for it in the services window and we'll be able to disable it, assuming it's not something that's really required by the computer. So how do we do this? Well, hovering over the process that's causing the issue, we'll read what it says under services. Now, because most of these are acquired by Windows, I'm not going to show you exactly which one I'm going to disable. After finding which one is causing the issue for you, hit start, type in services, and open up the services app as such. Otherwise, you can hold start in R and then type in services.msc. After hitting enter, the same window will open up. Now inside of here, all we're going to do is sort by name and look for the service that's causing the issue. Let's say it's not one of these Windows processes and instead it's something like a Google Chrome update service. Simply right clicking on it, going to properties, we'll see this window here. We can simply click the stop button to stop the process if it's running and we can click start to start it once again. Sometimes clicking stop and then clicking start is enough to solve it. Otherwise, if it keeps causing an issue whenever it's running, you can change startup type to disabled, hit apply, and then click stop. After doing that, the process will be closed and it won't be automatically reopened even after you restart your computer. Sometimes if it's set to automatic, setting this to manual and clicking apply means that you have to start the service yourself and it's not completely disabled. As far as I know, programs can also start up the service whenever it's needed. It's just not running in the background automatically all the time. 
This can also be a solution if you still need one of these surfaces to run while you're using a specific program. If a program breaks after doing this, make sure to change it back to automatic, apply and start it if necessary. So it's a really iffy business fixing this kind of issue. And luckily, more than likely, it's a rootkit virus or malware that antivirus software can get rid of. But anyways, that's about it for this video. Hopefully this video helped you. Otherwise, make sure to do your own research and see if you can find anything more on this topic. If this isn't the end of your journey, I wish you luck. Thank you for watching. My name's been Techno, be here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.